this is just going to be a heck of a fight, and they're whipping off the moves from the previous game that they just played. I mean, one thing is, you can see it there just from the speed that Kramnik moves. He is a tremendous blitz player. If Unchuck the first to deviate, he's played his queen to e8. That's interesting. And now Kramnik slamming down bishop e3, which is what he did the last time. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I, I don't like to take sides here, but um, if Ivanchuk gets through and wins, wins that car, they better watch out in Moscow. I can't think what Ivanchuk would be like as a driver. <laughs> okay. Well, he's, he's trying to get in the driver's seat right now, and a g3 is a threat to chase his knight out the way, and he has moved the knight back. And now he has some, some dynamic options. He's getting ready maybe to punch with f4 in the position, play f4, and open up lines. Matter of fact, f4 would just win the white bishop on e3. So Kramnik's going to have to do something, and he's captured. He's captured and played bishop to e2, attacking the knight. The knight retreats. And f4 is still a possibility, sacrificing a pawn. So I think Ivanchuk has come out of the opening very well. It's, he's got these two pawns there. And Kramnik forced to advance his pawn in front of his king. Now that is very weakening. Now the question is, can Ivanchuk take advantage of that? Somehow, you see, he had to block the two black pawns in the center. He's but fortunate that he's not, he's not under attack right away. Yeah, but in doing so, he's created tremendous weaknesses with that pawn move to f4. So Ivanchuk has got to be happy with this. And it's Kramnik who's just taking his time now. Now he's played knight f3, just attacking the e pawn. Not really, though. It's well protected. And now an exchange has occurred. Takes and bishop takes. Knight h5. And knight Good move. Back to h5. And I think that this is not what Kramnik wanted. He, he's gotten to a position where now his bishop can be captured. Knight can take the f4 piece. And that's a great piece. And once that piece goes, black's bishop on g7 is going to dominate the dark squares. So Kramnik looking to evacuate his king to the queen side, just get it out of trouble. But the bishop on g7 looking very powerful now. You can fun. see eventually just twiddling his hair there. Oh, he shake. You can see him shake. He is really nervous. But he's, that hasn't adjusted to the speed though, because look how long he took on the last move. He's two minutes and 41 seconds. He used about 35 seconds, maybe 40 seconds on the last move. You can't keep doing that if you expect to win in this competition. And Kramnik playing rook to g1, an interesting move. So if the knight takes the bishop, then the line of the rook is opened up towards black's king. So Kramnik fighting here. The possibilities have increased tremendously. Now something like knight e4, the knight on c5 can land on e4. That's an interesting possibility. He also can simply take the bishop. Now he has played knight e4. Now applying pressure to the position Boy, Ivanchuk with a big position, centralized, the knight is exchanged, pawn takes, and now that, that knight on f3 is under attack, it's going to have to move somewhere. I think Ivanchuk is, is certainly got to be happy with this position. Knight to d4, Kramnik fighting, that knight coming to a good central post, it might be able to slam into e6. He's also opened up the line of the bishop towards the knight at the side of the board, the bishop on e2 can take the knight on h5. So Kramnik fighting, this game far from over, and Ivanchuk with a significant time disadvantage. He has less than two minutes now, and Kramnik has over three minutes. Now look at this position, and he has captured knight takes, and the h pawn is hanging. Black could simply play bishop takes h3, and nibble on a pawn. I'm not sure he wants to do that, but look at the time. It's such a big advantage right now that even if Ivanchuk were winning, he might end up losing this game just on time alone, and now he's played queen to e7. Oh, that's a good move. He's preparing to put it on f6, and just to form a battery against the knight on d4 and the pawn on b2. And now a check. Queen h4 check. Now king up to d2. But that, then he he's just, well, this is very unclear. Kramnik with a, a strong attack down the g-file. This is tremendously unclear. And he has captured the pawn, and he's now up a pawn and threatening the knight on d4. He's and, threatening to capture the knight on d4. And more importantly, he's he can exchange queens. Now, once Ivanchuk exchanges queens, then his king will be much safer. Well, so, actually, he's not threatening to capture the knight just yet because of the pin on the g-file. But, as you said, exchanging queens, maybe moving his king over to h8, and then the bishop will, will operate with pincer-like effect. So black is now up a pawn. He's threatening to exchange queens, and maybe he'll win even another pawn. So Ivanchuk with a good position, but his time situation, he has about a minute and a half left. 
His time, he's desperately short, but he's now two pawns up. Ooh, whipping off another pawn as if it, be it belonged to him from the beginning of the game. And now Kramnik in big trouble exchanging rooks, and he can only rely on the time to save him because he's down two pawns. Two pawns, maybe a little bit of play, maybe something like knight b5, but I don't think that's going to really do anything. He's going to have to go for it. And it may be played bishop g4, but he has played knight b5, rook f7, and c5, c5 trying to break open the position. That's and great. Now the bishop can move up to c4 if the pawn is taken. So Kramnik trying to find as much, create as much confusion in the position as possible. And Ivanchuk down to his final minute. Oh, this is going to be good. Now d6, and the threat is to play bishop to c4, and look at this, Ivanchuk has ignored that possibility, and he goes after the, the white knight. Now bishop c4 would be answered by pawn takes knight, and black would have, count him, three pawns? Is it three pawns for the exchange? So, so Ivanchuk coming up with a great possibility, and Oh, that's a very clever move. He's played the king to f8. Now that means his bishop on g7 is free to move. He's got out of the line of the rook. So, very complicated, but Ivanchuk looks to have everything under control. Kranik forced to move his king back. E3 oh, check. Oh, that's king, nasty. King b1, and look at this. Bishop leap into the game. Bishop c4, and now there's some threat. And he's taking the pawn. He doesn't even care about his rook. And the rook has been taken. King takes, and he... And, Oh, the knight has been forced into a miserable square, and now Ivanchuk dominating the game. His bishop forcing an exchange, and Ivanchuk winning clearly. The only question is, can he win in time? He has just three quarters of a minute left. So this is a desperate situation with Ivanchuk. He's winning easily, but his time is ticking out. And Kramnik, he's brilliant at speed chess. Will he be able to play quickly enough? And now they're just whipping out the moves, and Ivanchuk has figured out how to queen. He's queened a pawn, and he could just claim a draw very easily here. He doesn't even need to because he's winning on the board. His king whipping over to pick off the last pawn, and he's going to win. Kramnik has resigned. Oh, a brilliant performance by Ivanchuk in the shootout. Kasparov and Anand's first game was short but sweet. The game exploded in the opening, but just as quickly burnt out to a draw. The second game also saw a slightly unusual opening. Anand, playing white, opened with his customary pawn to e4. Kasparov played his favourite, Sicilian defence, pawn to c5. Then came knight f3, d6, white pawn to d4, pawn takes pawn, and now instead of the standard knight takes d4, Anand played queen takes d4, which is a known line just a little bit off the beaten track. The idea is that when black plays the knight out to c6, the queen doesn't have to retreat. White pins with bishop to b5. Kasparov didn't want to allow that and played instead bishop to d7, just preparing to play knight c6 and then the knight won't be pinned. Anand played his pawn to c4. Now we have a so-called Marozzi bind type position that the pawns on e4 and c4 give white a great clamp in the center. Kasparov played his knight to c6 and now the queen retreated not to d1 but to d2 which looks very odd indeed blocking in the bishop on c1. We'll see the point of this a little later on though. Sabarov played g6, preparing to fianchetto his bishop. Bishop e2, bishop to g7, and Anand castled. All fairly standard stuff. Knight came to f6, attacking the e-pawn. Knight came out to c3, defending. Black castled. White played the rook to b1. That's a clever little move. The bishop on g7... It's often able to generate some tactical tricks along the long diagonal, so it's sensible for Anand just to move his rook off the long diagonal. Kasparov's task in this position is actually to try and chip away at White's strong centre, chip away at these central pawns. To that end, he played 
a modest little pawn move here, pawn to a6. Now what he wants to do with this is to prepare the break pawn to b5. The moment it's not quite possible, but the idea of this is to attack the pawn on c4, and when the pawn is taken, then this would open up the line of black's rook on a8 down towards the pawn on a2. So it would really open up the position. But it's difficult to get in this move if white plays accurately.